Okay, let's review session one together by turning to page one of your Becoming a Disciple Maker Leader's Guide. Page one is right after the contents and the introduction. You'll use this guide as you lead your small group members to become disciple makers. As you turn to page one, you'll immediately notice an interesting layout design. We're told that this format makes teaching both semesters remarkably simple and enjoyable. Here's how the system works. Any box material in your book is designed exclusively for you, the leader. The student's guide does not have boxes. If the box material is shaded like you see on page one, it means the authors are telling you what to do or giving you an answer to a discussion question. Again, if the box material is shaded like you see on page one, it means the authors are telling you what to do or giving you an answer to a discussion question. To emphasize this, let's write what to do next to the box shaded area. Next, please write answer to a question next to the box shaded area and again put an arrow pointing to the box. Now as I explain the boxes, remember everything I'm telling you is written in the introduction of your leader's guide. So you can go back and review this instruction at any time. Let's look at page one together and please follow along as I read page one. Thanks for your leadership. In preparation for teaching this life-changing course on New Testament disciple making, please take the following steps. Step one, begin asking God for the wisdom to discern your group members' spiritual needs. Your ministry objective will be to lead them by example, helping every participant reach his or her God-given spiritual potential. Remember that your group members will usually begin expressing their felt needs and honest questions when they become convinced that you truly care about them and their opinions. This is why you need to ask the Lord to make you a good listener as you teach this curriculum. When you ask your group a question, be patient and let them try to discover the truth on their own. Step two, prayerfully read the introduction to becoming a disciple maker. As you quietly think about what you're reading, ask the Lord to make this course a refreshing personal time of deeper spiritual commitment. Step three, prepare to lead each weekly session, making sure you're sufficiently familiar with the questions and answers to simply glance at them as you deliver the course's content. Plan to take ownership of this material by practicing in advance. This will enable you to maintain good eye contact with your group members while teaching. To enhance your delivery and increase your effectiveness, highlight key thoughts with a colored marker. So we'll turn the page and then look at step four. Review your personal Becoming a Disciple Maker Leaders Pack. Then the next step is what you'll actually do during your first session. So let's look at that together. First thing, during your first session, welcome your group members and briefly introduce yourself. Next, lead in prayer, asking the Lord to teach His truths through you. Next, distribute a Becoming a Disciple Maker student pack to each student. Then, ask each group member to briefly introduce themselves. Next, give a short testimony about why you decided to receive Christ. Next, share a conversion story about the person who helped you grow personally as a Christian or the struggles that you may have encountered because you didn't have somebody to personally disciple you. Next, remember you'll always verbally read the unshaded box material to your group like these following sentences. Now you'll notice that we've come to some boxed material which is unshaded. This means that the authors are telling you what to say. Again, when you come to boxed material which is unshaded, the authors are telling you what to say. So let's write what to say next to the unshaded box and draw an arrow pointing to the box. Okay, please follow along as I present the rest of page two. 
Now I'm going to present the material that's not shaded, which starts with after you. After you became a believer, how many of you were privileged to have a Christian friend intentionally invest their time and life to help you grow spiritually? How many of you missed that opportunity because uh, you did not have someone to disciple you? Next, you'll see a shaded area which says, briefly tell your group why you're excited about teaching this course on New Testament disciple making. Now, when you see a shaded area, it's almost like the author sitting on your shoulder telling you, whispering in your ear, what to do. Now, the next part is a unshaded boxed area, which means what I will say to my students. Throughout this course, we're going to enjoy reading aloud and participating in interactive discussions. Then we have a shaded area, which is the authors telling us what to do. Ask the person on your left to begin reading and then continue that process around the room. Each reader will simply proceed from one paragraph to the next. Be sensitive to the possibility that some group members may not feel comfortable reading aloud. And then I have unshaded box material, which means I'll say something to my group. Dave, would you please turn to page one and read aloud the first paragraph of our course overview. We'll all turn to that page and follow along with you. Now I'd like to introduce you to my small group members who are being trained to become disciple makers. Welcome everyone. Hi. Hi. Please watch as I lead my group of disciple makers in training. We'll begin with session one starting on page three of your leader's guide. Because this is unboxed material, I'm going to ask one of my students to read. Megan, would you please read the first paragraph on your page, please? Discipleship and disciple making. Most of us are familiar with the word discipleship. However, during this course, we will use the more relational term disciple making. Let's consider how these two related terms are currently being used in church life. Discipleship generally refers to traditional Christian education. Disciple making refers to the process of spiritual multiplication through one-to-one, life-to-life equipping relationships like Paul experienced with Timothy, Titus, and other growing believers. Great. Dave, can you read the next paragraph sure. for us? The ministry objective of this course is to prepare successive generations of dedicated church members to invest their lives in fulfilling the Great Commission. The church's response to our Lord's mandate calls for the sustained development of dedicated Christians who will devote themselves to sharing their faith, making disciples, and multiplying spiritually. Our generation's challenge is to model that biblical lifestyle and to set the right spiritual example. Great. Uh, Alexa, can you read the next paragraph for yes. us? For many Christians, the most intimidating aspect of discipleship is learning to share their personal witness. However, this doesn't have to be the case. As we develop spiritual growth skills and mature, witnessing simply becomes the natural overflow of our relationship with Christ. Okay, super. Now you'll notice in your leader's guide that we've come to an unshaded box at the bottom of the page. That always means what to say. So let's look at the box at the bottom of the page and as a group leader your mission is to prepare in advance for each session so you can deliver each box teaching point smoothly with confidence. If I'm unprepared I may deliver the box material like this. Ideally a Christian's witness will resemble, that's how you don't want to deliver the material. What you want to do is read the material in advance and deliver it something like this. You know, in our Christian walk, our, it's like a glass of water. When we decide to have a quiet time, spend time with God in Bible study and time with Him, then it's like a faucet. God is like a faucet, and the water comes into the glass and overflows naturally to others, and ministry becomes natural. Let's turn to page four in your leader's guide. You'll notice that the word model is underlined in the leader's guide. If you have an underlined word in your leader's guide, it means there is a fill in the blank question in the student's guide. If the answer seems fairly easy, ask if someone can fill in the blank with the correct word. Another important feature is the illustration and amplification section. Let's turn to the middle of page 11 in your leader's guide and I'll show you how that works. Let me read the shaded area for you. We suggest that you use a large clear bowl of water 
and a sponge for the following illustration. Your group members will always remember it. Give illustration number two on page 160, the sponge illustration. So let's go ahead and turn to page 160, and I'll read that illustration for you. So before you leave this session, you will have read this illustration so you don't have to turn to the back of the book. Take a soft sponge in your hand, tightly squeeze the sponge, and completely submerge it in a bowl of clear water. As you do this, explain, at this moment the sponge is totally in the water, but notice that very little water is in the sponge. Only when I release my grip is the sponge filled. This illustrates how confession, repentance, and total submission to God equate with the physical act of opening my hand. Once the sponge is filled with water, it remains full unless I squeeze it and take control again. The spiritual lesson is to remain yielded, enjoy his fullness as a way of life.